Hello, welcome to Vedo Day 26. Uh, today I wanted to share my birth story, my home birth. My third baby was uh, Luther Joseph Penton, and I had him at home. So um, Joel, my first baby, was born at 40 days at, or 40 weeks and six days. He was induced, so I could have gone much longer, but I don't know how long. Um, my second baby, Judah, was born at 40 and three days, um, but I went into real labor with him. And by um, 41 weeks with Luther, I started to get very nervous because I had not gone into labor yet. Um, I decided that if I went closer to 42 weeks that I would go in for probably a biophysical profile, which is what most OBs would do at that point. Um, but I wanted to give it to more like 42 weeks because that's, that's really when more risks happen. Not so much at 41, but I started to get nervous at 41. I started to tell more people about the home birth at 41 weeks um, for the purpose of prayer. So I did all the natural induction methods, um, including blue and black cohosh, uh, coupled with pumping every hour, and that didn't work. Um, everything else I tried. Um, but I did not want to do at castor oil because I was nervous about meconium. Um, like I said, if that happened... I would go to the hospital, so I didn't want meconium in the water, so I didn't do castor oil, and um, finally the last thing that I did at 41 weeks one day was acupuncture. Um, I went to an acupuncturist, and she put the little needles in me at the pressure points and kind of rolled them around like the point is to irritate those pressure points, to stimulate them, and uh, sure enough, um, the next day... I started having more painful contractions, um, definitely more intense, uh, maybe not painful, but just intense in my back. Um, and they, you know, went all day long, which wasn't anything new. I mean, that had been happening to me, but the fact that they were in my back was a little bit new. So, um, and then they're starting to get more and more intense all night long. And so I told um, our, the oldest, boy, uh, Joel, um, when we put him to bed that night um, at 8 p.m., I told him that, you know, make sure he was ready because uh, the friend of ours was going to come to the house and get him up in the morning and take him away from our house. And because I was that sure that I was going to go into labor that night. And he was fine with that. He was prepared. Um, and at 10 p.m., my water actually broke, which was crazy. It was something I was not expecting. I was going to the bathroom. I stood up and my water broke. It was like in the bathroom, so it was easy clean up. Um, and there was like a little bit of like vernix and stuff in it, which I expected it to be clear, but there wasn't any meconium. So I was super happy about that. Like I didn't have to worry about that. Um, but you know, contractions weren't like picking up like crazy. A lot of people, right when their water breaks, the baby's head moves down and uh, contractions pick up, but not with me. They were about every 10 or 15 minutes. Um, so I texted my midwife, Patty, and told her my water broke, and she said, I'm coming right over, lay down on the couch, because I think she thought I was further along than I was. Joel was so funny. He started cleaning up the house. He vacuumed. He did the dishes. He came up to the bedroom and, like, started putting plastic on the floor. <laughs> he was just, he was really excited, so it was cute. Um, but, you know, even though Patty told me to lay down. I knew that nothing was really happening. So but when she came, she was about an hour away. She came and she did my cervix check and I was only two centimeters and high. He was high up. So she then asked if she could go to sleep on my couch. <laughs> and I was like, sure. Um, cause I was kind of wondering what she was going to do anyway. And Joel at that point was like, Oh, okay. I guess we're not having the baby right now. <laughs> Even though I tried to tell him that we weren't, but um, so at that point, they're about every 10 minutes, and, um, then at, like, midnight, we came, we came up here to the bedroom, uh, to clean up even more, get the pool ready, um, do some more covering with plastic, <laughs> and, uh, we watched some shows on the bed, and Joel fell asleep, and I fell asleep probably for about, like, two or three minutes, like, in between each contraction, like, it would take me a while to fall back asleep, I'd fall back asleep, and then the contraction would wake me up, so it wasn't really good sleep, but I did kind of have rest, so that was good, um, that was from 12 to 4, so that was a while, they were still about 8 to 10 minutes apart at that point, um, finally at 4 a.m., I was like, I've had enough of this, I really want to get in that pool, 
Patty didn't want me to get in the pool. Um, when you get, when your water breaks, you have a higher risk of infection. And so, like, a lot of OBs and doctors, like, will say not to even get in a bath, like, ever. Um, we were okay with me getting in the pool, but she wanted me to wait until the very end, but I didn't want to. So I really wanted to get in the pool. So I got in the pool at four, um, and it was wonderful. Oh my goodness, it felt so good. Uh, mostly because, like, in between the contractions, I had this nice, like, weightless feel. Like, I always, I didn't know what to do in between contractions, because during the contraction, I would do whatever it felt, whatever felt good to take the pain away. Whether it was, like, leaning forward, or, like, having Joel push on my back, or whatever. But in between, I wanted to, like, sit down, but I felt like that was dumb, like I should squat or something, you know, sitting, like, puts pressure against the pelvis, like, you want it to come down, you're, like, pushing, like, I didn't want to sit, and laying is silly, because once you finally get down, I mean, you're big, it you, takes you a while to, like, lay down, and then get back up, and so, I just didn't know what to do in between, and with the pool, it was just, like, you just sit there and relax, and you're, like, weightless, and oh, it felt so good, so, um, from four to six, I was in the pool laboring, and my contractions slowed down. They slowed down to, like, every 12 or 15 minutes. Before that, they were every eight to 10. And finally, at 6 a.m., Patty really, really was encouraging me to get out. So um, I got out, fully expecting to get back in, and my contractions really picked up at that point, prompting my husband to say, I think that pool really slowed things down. And I shot him the dirtiest look. I was like, whatever. I liked it. Like, <laughs> because it, I did. I liked it. I was just annoyed when he said that. But, um, but he was right. I mean, it did slow things down. But, uh, yeah, when I got out, <clears throat> things picked up quickly. And um, we started, I started to labor with my hands, like, against the bed standing up. And Joel would come behind me with a heating pad and push on my back. And that seemed to really help. Um, me cope with the contractions and um, but it was getting like pretty unbearable it was um, pretty bad one thing I remember about this time were the temperature extremes like I would be so freezing cold in between contractions I would just be begging for them to like throw a blanket over me and I was like shaking like physically shaking and then during the contraction I would like pour sweat like I was so hot I'm like get this heating pad off of me I don't want it and then I would change my mind and I would want it and so <laughs> my husband was really good about dealing with all of those crazy demands that I had at the time but I was so like blown away by all the temperature extremes like that was really weird something I was not expecting um finally at 6 30 so conservatively I had been laboring for um eight hours I mean, I was laboring before my water broke, too, so um, I really felt like I couldn't continue, and I read that that was like an emotional signpost, and I was hoping that I was in transition, so I was like, maybe I can get Patty to do a cervix check, and I'll be seven, and that'll really encourage me, so I asked her to do it, she didn't want to do it, and um, she agreed to do it, and I was only five and a half centimeters, and only 50% dilated, so, or 50% effaced, and he was still really high up. So I was really, really discouraged at that point. I had gone through a lot of hard labor, I thought. And the progression just wasn't very fast. I mean, especially for your third kid. Like, I was like, this is weird. Like, what's happening? Why isn't my body cooperating? And I started getting really discouraged. And I started to cry. And I asked Joel to pray. And he prayed. Um, and he sent out a text at that point. Um people were waking up my family and they were all like why haven't you had the baby yet your water broke at 10 p.m what's the deal it's your third baby it should just fall right out of you right and so he texted them and told them to pray too um and then shortly after that it was around seven um, my friend came to pick up my sons joel and judah um which was really nice because i could hear them in the background and so that was a little good distraction. Also, it motivated me to be quiet. Um, I was getting, they were getting really painful, the contractions, so I would kind of yell, like, at times. Um, like, sometimes, like, at the height of the contraction, I'd, I was, like, in so much pain that, like, I wouldn't breathe, or I would, like, 
gasp or grunt or something. It was weird. Um, I just didn't know how to deal with the pain. Like, I couldn't settle myself down. So anyway, it was good motivation to keep a little quieter <laughs> when the boys came um, or when they left the house. Um, but then at that point, around 7.30, I kind of gave myself a reality check. I just thought, well, this isn't normal. It's not, like, progressing like a normal labor. Like, it's not just going off on its own. I have to encourage this labor to keep going. For whatever reason, it's just not going along. But the baby's healthy. Um, it's just going really slow. So what's the worst as far as length that could happen from here on out? Like, I'm five and a half centimeters, let's say I'm five, and dilating at one centimeter per hour is really slow from five to ten, especially for your third baby. So I thought, if I do, if I dilate one centimeter per hour, that would be really slow. Let's say that happens. That would put me at noon when the baby's born. I can do that. Like, I can do this for five more hours. I can do noon, noon. I can do it. I can do it. So I just kept looking at the clock and thinking, if I can do this until 12, like, I can get the baby out. And I think somehow that really just, like, wrapping my head around that time frame really helped me um, just have, like, a goal in sight. And so things got a smidgen better at that point. Um, Patty told me to walk the halls, and so I, I walked the hall um, of our house, the upstairs hall, and the uh, <clears throat> sun was coming in, and so... It was just a nice little change of scenery. I would stop whenever I had a contraction. I can't really walk through contractions. I don't know why. That's just not me. I had to stop and breathe. Um, but it was it was a decent time. It was a little bit better. Um, at 9 a.m., uh, Patty wanted to do a cervix check, or, or I know I wanted to, and uh, I was hoping it would give me some hope. Um, again, it proved to be a little bit disappointing. Um, I was only 7 centimeters, and... Um, I expected to be more because of the pain, and but I was a little bit more thinned out, and um, I was still pretty down about things uh, because I just figured I would would have been further along by then. So that's 9 a.m. I've been in labor for um, 11 hours. Yeah, at least 11 hours, probably longer, and um, I will finish the rest tomorrow.